It is Wednesday, October 28th, 2020, and this is your Three Gorges Dam update. We have several pieces of information to cover today, including a look at the live stream and the water level at the dam. Also, I was able to track down a tweet stating the CCP's official narrative. We also have some footage of the cranes moving on top of the dam and of a gentleman fishing to show you the scale of the dam. We're also going to have a look at some of your insightful comments and some new tweets and finally a time lapse of the dam at night with lights. Let's hop into it. And a brief caveat before today's video. While researching for these reports, I come across information from various sources. Just because I decide to include a piece of information doesn't necessarily mean that I agree with it. I like to let you decide for yourself. Moving on. And first, let's have a quick look at the live stream. And the spillway angle camera is still up and running today. And now a quick check in on our most dependable friend, the side angle camera. It's still down today. Moving on to the water level at the dam, the current water level is 174.61 meters, the current inflow is not noted, and the current outflow is listed at 17,200 cubic meters per second. It is worth noting that these numbers are released by the CCP. Over the past 24 hours, the water level at the dam went from 174.55 meters to 175 meters before dropping back down to 174.61 meters. And upstream at Kuntan, the water level has risen a bit. It was 175.8 meters 24 hours ago and currently sits at 176.03 meters. And I wanted to get to this right away today. This is courtesy of Guangming Daily. Aerial photo taken on October 22nd, 2020 shows Three Gorges Dam in central China's Hubei province. Three Gorges Dam started a water storage test on Wednesday to make its water level reach the highest design mark of 175 meters. And that was actually tweeted out on October 24th. I don't know how I missed it. But the importance of it is that that is the official narrative now. China is saying they're topping the dam off to 175 meters for the winter. I'm not saying you should or shouldn't believe the CCP's official narrative. I'm only presenting the information that I find. But this would explain why there has been no visible discharge from the dam in the past few weeks while the water level has continued to rise. Also note the large amount of trash behind the dam in the photo. And the information contained in this comment is rather interesting. This is courtesy of Rocket Surgeon. The distortion is because Google uses 3D composite images made from numerous 2D image angles. If the dam was flopping around like a wet noodle as some of the photos show, it would have broken long before it ever got that bad. Concrete can't bend like that. Here is a satellite photo from another source that was taken last week that doesn't use 3D compositing that shows that the structure is still pretty straight. The level of warping reported by a Chinese hydrological engineer who had a structural report on the condition of the dam said that several features of the dam have moved by a few inches. Alright, let's hop over to the link. And it does look fantastic over at Sentinel Hub. And this was taken on October 22nd. Another image zoomed in a little more. Yeah, it looks like you would expect it to look. It definitely looks a lot closer to that 2009 image of the dam. Thank you for sharing that with us, Rocket Surgeon. And I also found this to be pretty interesting. While watching the dam, I happened to capture some footage of two cranes in operation. Watch the two cranes on the left hand side of the screen. Now this is about 16 minutes worth of footage condensed down to about 45 seconds.
And for those of you that aren't aware of the scale of this dam, from my understanding the cranes on top are about 60 feet tall. Also yesterday when recording some footage of the dam, I happened to capture a gentleman fishing. Note how small he is on the bottom of the screen. And one thing I don't often take into consideration, that I probably should more, is that not everyone can watch every second of every video, and there are things that we have covered in previous videos that people just aren't aware of, like this comment for example. This is courtesy of John Murphy. To compose a Google Earth image, many strips have to be taken by the orbital satellite. The strips are then composed or stitched together so that the Google Earth software can display an apparent continuous surface. To capture enough data, a number of orbits may be required. And John, thank you so much for watching and taking the time to share that with us. And yeah, John, we uh, had actually covered that in a previous video and we are fully aware of that. What I was actually pointing out in yesterday's video, I just found it odd that the 2019 Google Earth images are so much more distorted than an alleged 2009 Google Earth image. I was just having a hard time figuring out why we see a decrease in quality over the course of a decade in advancement of technology. And this comment is courtesy of Turd Sandwich. That is exactly what I was talking about when I said there are distorted pics all over Google Earth. Concrete does not bend in curves. In my 25 plus years working in construction, concrete cracks, falls apart, and breaks. Stress points form in angles. Just my own thoughts from working on home foundations, bridges, roads, culverts, etc. And thank you for the comment, Turd Sandwich. Yeah, absolutely. I'm hoping nobody got the impression that I actually believe the Google Earth images are real. I was just trying to figure out why they're distorted. We was looking into the areas around the dam, seeing if those were distorted, checking out some domestic areas like the Hoover Dam, the Denver International Airport, seeing what was up there and why those images aren't distorted, and really just kind of doing a bit of a forensic investigation, that's all. And our last comment is courtesy of Switch. I'd like to know how you got involved with reporting on China. I mean, why there? Been very informative, just wondering why with all the places you could have picked. Thank you for the comment, Switch. Yeah, great question. Um, a couple of years back, we had a dam called the Oroville Dam here in America, where we actually had a lot of issues, and I became interested in those types of stories then. And uh, so when this story started to develop, I looked around for some information, couldn't find a whole lot, and thought, uh, why not try to cover it myself? Yeah, so... Uh, Thank you for the for the comment and um, let's let's move along to the tweets and don't forget at the end of today's video we have time lapse footage of the dam at night. Thank you for watching this video. If you're finding it informative, please consider giving the channel a subscribe. Now the tweets, followed by two hours of footage, condensed down to two minutes of the dam at night with lights.
and I think that's a good place to wrap up today's video. I hope that you found it informative and check back soon for more content. Thank you.